and we continue with Jack the Giant Hunter by Richard Doyle. As Jack had been so fortunate in all his adventures, he resolved not to be idle in the future, but still to do what services he could for the honor of the king and, the na and nation. He therefore humbly begged his majesty to furnish him with a horse and money that he might travel in search of new and strange exploits. For, said he to the king, there are many giants still living in the remote parts of Wales, to the great terror and distress of your majesty's subjects. Therefore, it pleases you, sir, therefore, if it pleases you, sire, to favor me in my design, I will soon rid your kingdom of these giants and monsters in human shape. Now when the king heard this offer and began to think of the cruel deeds of these most bloodthirsty and savage monsters, he gave Jack everything proper for such a journey. After this, Jack took leave of the king and queen and all the knights and set off, taking with him his cap of knowledge, his sword of sharpness, his shoes of swiftness, and his, and his invisible coat, the better to perform the great exploits that might fall in his way. He went over the hills and wild mountains, and on the third day he came to a large forest where all of a sudden he heard very dreadful cries. He forced his way through the trees and saw a monstrous giant dragging along by the hair of their heads, a handsome knight and his beautiful lady. Their tears and cries melted the heart of the honest Jack. He alighted from his horse and tying him to a tree, put on his coat of darkness under which he carried his sword of sharpness. When he came to the giant, he made several strokes at him with it, but could not reach his body on account of the enormous height of the terrible creature. But he wounded his legs in several places, and at last, putting both hands on his sword and aiming with all his might, he sliced off both his legs a little below the knee. The trunk of the giant's body tumbling to the ground made not only the trees shake, but the earth itself tremble with its weight. The knight and his lady thanked Jack most cordially, for saving them from the fate that was in store for them, and concluded by inviting him to return with them to their castle. But Jack, who remembered his promise to the king, and thirsted most ardently for some fresh adventures, was forced to decline. Therefore, after first cutting off the giant's head and sending it to court, he mounted his horse and pursued his journey. And we'll pause there.